Hey, welcome back guys. Um, I hope everyone is okay with me making these videos. Um, it's a bit of the off season, so it's a decent you know, time to make videos about investing and about all this sort of stuff. Um, I will be getting back to gardening videos. I actually have a video coming up on land selection and things that um, you should look for and aligning your land selection or project um, with your goals for what you wanna do on that land. I think it's gonna be a great video, so stick around and that'll be coming shortly. Today, I did wanna just do a really quick video actually, um, specifically talking about two things. The first half is gonna talk about um, ways that um, Citadel and Melvin and Robin Hood are going to attempt to get out of the situation they're in. Remember, this is not a gamble right now as much as this is a bubble and it will come down at some point the reason why it's working the reason why um, this is the play that has caught on steam is because they are 100 percent trapped and the only way they get out is when we sell um, so it's really important that we understand that i'm going to talk today about um, ways that they're going to try to get us to sell essentially ways that they can get out of this tactics that they'll use they've already started many of these things and it's really important that you understand what's going on um, because of some there's a, a lot of questions that i'm getting um, about stuff like should i buy amc right now and this is really important for you to hear so let's get into it um, one other thing um, I do also want to then talk about cryptocurrency. This is a pretty good place to talk about it. Um, I want to talk about why it's absolutely important, why we have to kind of unplug ourselves from the propaganda that we've been told from the people whose industries it's displacing. And I really want to hammer one thing about the cryptocurrency talk when I talk about it. It'll be the second half of this video, um, but I really want to get one point across that Bitcoin is not cryptocurrency. Bitcoin is just the first iteration of cryptocurrency and there's a so much more that's going on in that space. Typically, as soon as something, someone talks about cryptocurrency, all of a sudden we're talking about Bitcoin and you know, is Bitcoin a Ponzi in a bubble and you can't use it to buy coffee and all this kind of ridiculous stuff. Um, and it distracts away from all the other stuff that's going on in cryptocurrency. And it's all that stuff which I think is why we need cryptocurrency and why this event is showing us exactly why we need that. So stick around, a bit of a long intro. Hope you enjoy this video and let's get to it. And really quickly, I just have to say, I'm not an investment advisor. I have no um, financial um, gain in you buying or selling anything. Uh, do what you want with your own money. I recommend everyone stays far away from GameStop uh, because chances are you're gonna lose whatever you put into it. Okay, part one, what tools are they going to use to try to get out of this? And they are going to use every single tool in the book. They're literally breaking the law by denying service to exchanges to buy only on the buy side. 100% um, corrupt. If they're willing to do this stuff with the world watching, understand fully that they are doing every single thing in their book, in their dirty little playbook to try to manipulate people to either not buy GameStop stock or to sell GameStop stock. Um, I did the video yesterday on short interest squeeze. I really wanted to make uh, it clear to people that this is not even close to over. And they want you to think it is because they're doing short ladder attack buys and a ton of wash trading in order to dump the price, create volume, and make it look like people are leaving their positions. This is just one of the tactics and more of them are coming and they're happening right now. They're gonna happen all over the next coming weekend. You're gonna see it all over the news. And what I want to talk about specifically is something that I see a lot. People are saying, what's the next game? Fully understand one thing. There is no next GameStop. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity where they have been backed into a corner because they have overshorted compared to the float of shares. They cannot get out. Fully understand that is the single only reason why the small person can fight back because they got caught with their hand in the cookie jar and they are stuck. Other stocks are having significant short positions opened up against them. Stocks like BlackBerry, AMC, um, Nokia to a le lesser uh, extent, um, Bed Bath and beyond. And you're gonna start seeing, you may have already started seeing this show up on stuff like CNNBC and Fox News or whatever news you watch. 
um, and they're going to talk about what is the next um, GameStop short squeeze. There is not a next GameStop short squeeze, so fully understand that. The only reason why this opportunity exists is because they have over shorted the market. That is not the case with any of those others. AMC, if you want to purchase that stock because you believe in AMC theaters, you believe it's devalued compared to where it should be because of COVID-19, you believe that they'll come out of this okay, you believe that you know right now it's a good buy, down the future it'll be a great buy, buy it for that reason. Do not buy something like AMC because you think a short squeeze is coming, because it's not coming multiple reasons why the amount of floating shares out there compared to the short stocks open against them the volume of trading that's happening on those stocks it is not the next GameStop there is no other GameStop they are um, doing this in order to get people to try to sell their GameStop or not buy it and instead buy and use their capital to buy other stocks like AMC and um, Bed Bath and Beyond and Nokia and Blackberry Okay, so fully understand that there is no other opportunity for this and they are going to try to get you out of it. So if you want to join this fight, the only way, the only way to do it is to buy GameStop shares and hold on to them. Okay, another way they're going to try to get out of this is that as they close their short positions, they're going to open new ones higher. So if they shorted at say $30 a share, um, as they close that position out and take that massive loss because the stock's at $300 right now, they will reopen a short at $300, hoping that this is basically the top and then it'll crash back down and they can lose big time on the first short and recover it on the second short, reposition themselves to make more money on the downturn and hopefully wash themselves out of this. Now, the important thing about this is that they've been doing this all along, but because people haven't been selling and because this news story has picked up and in fact, more money has been buying when they tried to do this, like they shorted at like $20, they actually shorted at like $8 trying to drive this company into bankruptcy, like total predatory scumbags. Now, when the price went up to $50, they definitely opened more shorts to do this. Um, and close their worst shorts out to these better shorts. But because people kept buying and holding, drove the price up higher. When it hit to 100, absolutely, they were doing this then as well. And trying to keep that, um, trying to basically open new shorts and recoup the money on the crash. But because it kept getting bigger and people kept buying and holding, they keep getting more and more screwed. The way that they keep this going is they basically have to sell their other stock positions um, in order to free up the capital to pay off the lending rates to borrow the shares to short. Right now it's like 34% fee that they're paying in order to maintain their short position. So the only way that they, when they reopen their short positions, they're basically just extending the length of time that they're bleeding out. And to pay for that, they're getting loans from other hedge funds, they're selling their other positions, and this is why this is actually this weird vortex and black hole that's sucking the whole market down in with it because they are okay shorting, well, not shorting, but destroying the whole entire stock market by selling their other um, holdings and screwing their investors who are, you know, holding Tesla stock or um, Microsoft stock or Walmart stock. Um, they'll sell those positions out to feed into this giant black hole that they're creating um, and the whole rest of the market is going down. So this is why you're seeing the market kind of come down and you're seeing these single stocks spiking up because basically um, we're buying that stock and they're selling their other interests in order to keep their position on these shorts open. They're literally just taking the whole market and tossing it into a black hole because they want to stay solvent. And we can hold for longer than they can stay solvent. And that is why we win. And that is why we have the power here. Because if we hold and they just keep losing capital and money, eventually, you know, they're losing so much money uh, at this, especially as the price goes up. If we're buying and that short squeeze starts triggering, they just run out of capital and then bang, that's when it takes off. The short positions get closed 
and this thing goes to like a thousand, two thousand, ten thousand, fifty thousand dollars. So understand that um, they are literally sacrificing everything else to stay solvent. So when they're reopening these short positions, they do it at extreme cost to themselves. They're banking on the fact that people sell. This is what we're fighting right now. It's really, and this is why it's really important that we don't necessarily sell to take and sell to take profits and drive it down. Now, you're free to do that if that's what you want to do. I don't want to tell anyone to not take profits if they bought at 100 or 200 yesterday when I was saying to buy um, or saying that it's a good idea to buy and then it's at $300 now. Okay, if you tripled your money and you want to sell it and you know go buy solar panels or whatever, do it. But what I'm saying is that the way that they get out of this is by raising those shorts higher and higher and then making more money on the downswing. And the way we fight that is by holding and buying more. And they cannot get out. They are backing themselves even further into the corner. It's like, you know, they're painting themselves into a corner and they're just painting themselves deeper into that corner. And they're actually making it so that the swing up is going to be even higher. So the reward for people holding will increase exponentially if we continue to hold despite them doing that. But that is a tactic that they are doing. And again, from here tomorrow or on, on Monday when markets open, this stock could go from $0 or from $300 to $5 if everyone just sells and panics. That is the reality of the situation. You can lose everything you put in. Um, however, if everybody holds and even better, if we keep buying when they're doing these short ladder attacks and they're washing back and forth and we can scoop some of those shares out that they're sending back and forth to each other to try to drop the price. If we're scooping those up, um, you know, they're just basically giving us deals on the impending short squeeze, which hasn't happened yet. So understand these are the games that are being played. They're playing all of the games. They will use every single trick in the book to try to get us to sell, to try to manipulate you into buying other stocks. So just fully understand that this is um, just another day for them. And a lot of people coming in don't know what's going on. They're just buying out of hype. So put what you, if you are going to buy, put what you're okay with losing and then just hold it. And who knows, maybe a week and a half from now, it's worth 10 times as much. Um, or you can buy now and sell it 20% higher and just kind of enjoy the ride. And, you know, maybe you hold on to one share just to, you know, fight it. Um, but do whatever you want. But just I'm trying to under I'm trying to explain um, the things that they're going to try to do to get out of this position because they can still get out if we sell. Okay, there's a bunch of other things I could talk about. I really, really wanted to nail that one down though. Um, I think I'm gonna actually leave that other stuff out. I wanna get into this cryptocurrency thing before people start tuning out. Um, it's really, really important. Now, I haven't talked about cryptocurrency on this channel at all. I know that it is a um, polarizing uh, topic. I really just wanna be a gardening channel. I wanna teach people how to plant trees and restore the ecosystems and habitat that we're destroying. Um, and also, you know, my other um, uh, motive behind that is that the more that people reduce the cost of living, the more that they reduce bills in their life, the more that they simplify their lives, the more that they provide for themselves, the less dependent we are on the systems that basically control us. And it sounds, you know, it, it sounds a conspiracy level theory that we're being controlled and all this sort of stuff. But the reality is, is that um, the world is set up so that we take on a whole bunch of debt to buy a house, uh, buy cars, and then um, we're required to do these jobs, to, to work and you know trade our labor, trade our time for money in order to pay off and service that debt. The larger that our debt becomes, the more dependent we are on doing that. It kind of turns us into what we call wage slaves. Now, this even gets exasperated further when wages don't increase with the cost of inflation. Um, which is basically 100% what's going on. Okay, so my goal um, with this channel is to get people planting trees and to reduce their cost of living, to um, get food coming in that has less kilometers of transport than typical industries, but to get people more self-sufficient. Because 
A populace that is independent and self-sufficient and self-resilient is very difficult to control and manipulate because they kind of don't need the services that you're providing. If I make my own power, water, food, shelter, security, um, sanitation, then I don't necessarily need the things that you're using to enslave me. I can leave my job earlier, I can set myself up to be independent, and I can just get on with being happy in life. Um, the more that I buy, the more consumerism, rampant consumerism I have, the more stuff I go into debt to purchase because I think I need it even though I don't need it. Um, the more that I am able to be controlled and used as someone's cog in their giant capitalist machine. The world has been shown in the last couple days and weeks just why we need cryptocurrency. Now, I don't want to talk about Bitcoin. I talked about that a bit in the intro. This is not about Bitcoin. This is about cryptocurrency. And cryptocurrency is about decentralization. So let's talk about, instead of Bitcoin, something called Ethereum. Now, the important thing about Ethereum is that now you can program your currency. You can run applications on top of your currency. So this opens it up to stuff like decentralized finance. It opens it up to lending, smart contracts, the way real estate would be done. Um, it will impact every single way that the world does business. Now, why is this important? Okay, this is super important because one of the applications that you could use Ethereum for, and it's being done right now, um, developed, is you could run a decentralized financial exchange. And what that means is, Picture Robin Hood. Robin Hood.